This episode of Indie Mogul is sponsored by Squarespace. In real life, to our eyes, a jacket is green and the shirt is black. Yes. So look at that. <laughs> Neither one is anywhere near what it's supposed to be. How drastically can IR pollution affect the, the image quality? I, I would consider it disastrous. Hey, what is going on, Indie Mogul? My name is Ted, and today we're with Richard Crudeau, the past president of the ASC. And today we are talking about a problem that has existed since the beginning of time, but is new in our images today, and that is infrared. First question, Richard, is infrared light actually something that we need to be concerned with in filmmaking? Oh, it most definitely is. Oh, new problems that photographers, new things that filmmakers have to tackle. Infrared light is a problem, number one, because we don't see it but it's there. And if you have any interest in having true color fidelity in your images, you better address it. And for the people out there that think, oh, maybe this is just one of those marginal difference things that just makes the tiniest difference that I'm never going to notice in my image. This is not something negligent or negligible, I should say. Most any individual who you put an example of this skew of color in front of is gonna say immediately, wow, that's very different. Today's digital cameras, these sensors are quite sensitive yeah. to infrared in ways that we generally don't anticipate. If you're not aware of it going in, it's too late. What exactly does it look like when infrared starts to affect our image? In general, it causes unanticipated color shifts, mm -hmm. generally in, I guess, greens and reds, where it just will not render what you see. And you've got set dressing and you've got costumes and things are all set for a certain standard. And then at the moment of capture, it can all be sent askew. Your production designer, your poor production designer can be out there looking for the perfect shade of a, of a green oh, couch. Oh, sure, sure. Happens all the time. And then suddenly it's couch is brown. This is something that you as the cinematographer brought onto the set, yes. possibly unintentionally yes, too. Yes, absolutely. All cinematographers should be aware of it. So what is infrared light? Infrared light refers to a part of the spectrum of light that the human eye cannot see. Kind of like ultraviolet light, which is on one side of the spectrum, except infrared light comes on the other side of the spectrum right after the color red. The main point you need to know though is that both are forms of light that cannot be seen by the human eye, but could be captured by a camera. What are the sources of where this comes from? So you're saying that tungsten light has it, daylight light has it. Well, that's our two main sources of light. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of it naturally in, the, in sunlight and daylight. Even on cloudy days, the sun is the source. So whatever's filtering through is, is the sun in essence. So I guess my question is, is if if infrared light has been around since, you know, essentially the beginning of Forever. time. Why has this problem not been solved already? And why, how does this apply in a world of film? Digital sensors are much, much more sensitive to infrared than film ever was. So this is a new problem in a lot of ways too. We're trying to maintain everything in the visual spectrum, visible spectrum, the same way that we see it as our eyes. Right now, uh, you know, there are some cameras that do have IR filters mm -hmm. built into them, right? How do I know if my camera put in an IR filter or not, if they considered this a problem from the mm -hmm. get-go or not? I would get in touch with the manufacturer. Yeah. That's easy, or the dealer, whoever you dealt with. Talk to them, that's a good place to start, and then shoot some tests. What are some of the solutions that exist today? So obviously, I think we're all familiar with traditional filters that drop into a slot. You know, what's the purpose of an ND, just to break it down for those guys? Well, a neutral density filter just takes light away. Yes. It, it drops the light level. Let's say you're outside and sunny day, bright sunny exterior, your exposure is gonna be off the scale. Your lens probably won't be able to stop down far enough to handle that much light. So you drop in a neutral density filter. They come in one stop increments. So, and they're measured for some weird reason in threes. ND3 will remove one stop of light. Yep. ND6 will remove two stops and so on. You drop in the appropriate filter to get the stop down to where it's workable or to where you want it. Just in general, neutral density filters essentials have become absolute essentials. The Alexa has some, the different models have different grades of onboard NDs that are very yeah. handy to dial in. They're quick, yeah. but I still have a preference for the glass in front of the lens, you yeah. know? Now what's the problem with a lot of these kind of older style NDs versus kind of the newer ones for IR? The normal NDs that we've used forever and ever, they're just not anti infrared filters. Like an ND is not supposed to change the color of your image. No. It's supposed to just cut down just the amount of light. Just drop the intensity of the light. That's all it's supposed Which to do. Which means that across the board, across the color spectrum, it should cut out everything equally. Exactly. Evenly. Okay, well, let's look at a couple test examples real quick. You can kind of tell me what you're seeing in the image as we go through. Now, real quick, I want to talk to you guys about Squarespace, which will actually make a portfolio for you automatically. Basically, if you're an indie filmmaker out there, I'm willing to bet that you probably also have an Instagram where you post all of your cool stills from the latest short films and all the photos that you've taken. All you have to do is go to your settings, connect your Instagram to your Squarespace, and after that, all you need to do is choose a design and boom, 
you have a gallery block that will display all of your latest photos for you. That's literally it. Now, whenever anyone asks you to see your work, you now have a legit website to point them towards. So head on over to squarespace.com to start your 14-day trial. And if you type in squarespace.com slash indie mogul, you're actually going to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And we're going to put that link in the description down below. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And now, back to the episode. This is awesome going through. So this is an ND3, so this is one stop of light being cut. We can see this is ND6. In real life, to our eyes, if we were standing there, the jacket is green and the shirt is black. Yes. Okay, so look at that. <laughs> Neither one is anywhere near what it's supposed to be. Feels like it's cheapened the image. Yeah, I you agree. Know, it looks it, like a low budget, uncorrected it does. type of thing. I mean, look at the difference. That sparks back to some life and some decency. Okay, so this is being shot on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. This is an extremely pronounced problem with this camera. Super affordable, shoots great resolution. It's amazing in so many ways, but this falls into one of those cameras that doesn't mm -hmm. have the solution baked into it. Anybody could see this. We're not splitting hairs here. <laughs> I mean, a, a costume supervisor would look at this and, and have a stroke. Let's go back to say something like ND12. You it's know, not ND as bad, is. but the black, the shirt, looks a little milky. And is ND12 actually an ND that you'd use regularly when you shoot nowadays? Oh, sure. The NDs are flying in and out of that map box all day long. It's absolutely reasonable to be using that amount of ND. And this oh, is a true certainly. image that could be captured Absolutely. with the camera. This is not just for exaggeration here. Absolutely. This is like the most <laughs> ruthless, horrible thing you could do to your costume design. Yeah, but this is something yes. that should be discovered in testing. No more complex than this. This yeah. is as, as complicated as it needs to be. You may want to add some other colors that maybe are relevant to your show. Yeah, well, from they can always shoot film. You know? <laughs> and then the problems, yeah, yeah. shoot film, it'll be cheaper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the next thing to know beyond just, first of all, IR is a problem, is that the way that you cut IR is also a problem too. You yes. can't just yes. cut It's not IR. something very arbitrary. It has yeah. to be in balance with everything else that's going on at the same yeah. time. Nowadays, fortunately, the technology and the uh, the NATs, the natural filters at Tiffin, have gotten very good. So for, for these NAT filters that you're talking about, the idea here is that instead of just cutting out the IR part of the spectrum and, you know, leaving everything else the way it is, it, it passes things with absolute fidelity. The gotcha. things that, that should not be shifted or not shifted. Awesome. If you do it right, it just takes out the bad things and leaves the good things. This right here is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. This is regular ND at three, regular ND at six, and you can see already his shirt mm -hmm. starts to change a little bit. This is uh, ND9, ND12. This is when we start to get a little bit of that marooning. Yep. And again, we're seeing the problem in kind of full force here at the yeah, 18. Yeah, getting up there. His, his hair starts to turn a little red, <laughs> which, how much more personal can you get than changing <laughs> someone's hair color? Yeah. Here's an example of the Nats real quick. So this is dealing with the IR and dealing with it in a way that's balanced. That's about mm -hmm. as clean as we get. Point six, clean again. Nine, yeah, very, very clean. No marooning, but also no green tint that I'm seeing here. 12, of course, looking good on as well. 15, still clean here. And I think the thing for me is that black sheen here. And then 18, again, I think you're seeing just a tiny, tiny bit of green, but honestly, nothing compared to what was there before. So three, six, Nine. This is where the marooning in her pants. That's what I'm seeing it the most is right there. And finally, Nats real quick. So three, six, nine, twelve. And we're not getting any greening and we're not getting any. Look at her pants. All the work that Very so good. many people put in just to get black pants instead of maroon pants. I, there's no changes whatsoever. We go from three to 21. You know, it's, it's a little bit blue, but just very, very minimal comparative to, I think, any of the other ones on this. Now you can go in and, and take any surface and manipulate it within the frame. The ethic is do as much as you can still. Bake it in, do it at the lens, and then that saves you t an enormous amount of time and bother and money and everything else in post. Do you hear that? Do not fix it in post. <laughs> fix it in Get post. Get it right in is, the camera, the, please. It's the dirtiest phrase invented by man. <laughs> Big takeaways here in terms of people that are facing this problem for the first time. Infrared light is indeed there. Even though you don't see it, it causes um, issues with color. And if you're interested in true color fidelity, you need to address the issue. You're not capturing images with your eyeballs and sucking the picture out of your head. You're relying on a camera and a device Absolutely. to do this for you. Talk is cheap and claims that you read about in magazines, websites, and what have you about equipment. It's, it's all good, all well and good. However, trust no one. I should take that back. Trust, but verify. Then you won't have any issues. And if you do, the issue is your fault, not theirs. I would say test, test, test. Find the limits and try to break the limits of what your camera does or your technology does. And then you'll know for yourself and you'll be able to apply that in the best way when you go to work.
For people that want to find out more information about this, is there kind of anything you could recommend? I would call Tiffin, Doris, or go to a cinematographer who has experience with it. So go straight to the problem, figure it out, do some tests. Again, thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Start designing a portfolio that you are proud of by going over to squarespace.com slash IndieMogul, which will also give you 10% off of a purchase of a website or domain. If you want to know more about Richard or the ASC, don't forget that we've also got a podcast discussion with Richard that we'll also put in the description down below. IndieMogul, thank you so much for joining us, Richard. Thanks for thank coming you. out. Thank you. And of course, uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Roll right. credits. Music. Hmm. Amy's um, going to sing the theme song. Filters for <laughs> everyone. <laughs>